couch Dogs, me, guitar lessons Hey there Lickin' Riffers, how are you doing? Welcome to another full finger style arrangement lesson right here on Lickin' Riff. You like the previous Disney song, so you've asked for more Disney, so can you feel the love tonight? First I'm gonna play it for you so you can see and hear how the arrangement goes, and then we're gonna break it down lick by lick with tabs right here on the screen as usual. It goes like this, enjoy. Okay, so we've got the intro, the verse, the chorus, and two different endings for the chorus. Okay, so the intro starts with a C chord. So you can either pick strings 1, 5, or the whole chord, strings 1, 2, 3, and 5. Okay, you've got a choice. Depending on your own personal style and taste, you can pick the chord or just the melody with the bass note. Okay, anytime you see it in the tab. Then, after the C chord, you pick a G over B chord. Now, a G over B chord is just a normal G chord, okay, with this voicing, with three on the second string, okay, the D note. Um, and it's just without the sixth string. So you start with the B note, two on the A string, okay, that's G over B. So you can either put the chord on and pick strings two and five, or put the chord on without the sixth string and pick strings two and five. Makes no difference. Um, and then you pick the E string, okay, on three. So you get C, then G over B. Okay, got it? Then you have F. Again, you put the F chord and you can pick strings one and six or one, two, three and six. Four, a fat sound or a thin sound, depending on your style and personal taste. Then you have a C chord again, but now you have a melody line on the first string. So you pick three on the fifth string and one zero on the E string. Then one on the second string, then the open third string. So you got this. Got it? Then F again. Now your melody note now is um, the third string on two. So either pick that with the bass note or pick strings three, four, and six, or three, four, five, and six for the chord sound, then another C chord. You pick strings three and five, and then strings two, three, four. Okay, so you get. Then D minor, just a straight arpeggio, strings four, three, two, one. Then again, G with the D note, with three on the second string, and you can pick strings two and six, two, three and six, two, three, four and six depending on your own preference. And that's the intro. Pretty simple, right? C, G over B, F, C, F again, C again, D minor, G. That's the intro. 
the verse uh, starts with this lick. Right? Starts with an F chord, but you want to put it on like this. Two on the third string using your second finger and the thumb for the F bass note, one on the sixth string. Now, why is that? Because you want to keep your fingers free to play the melody that comes next. Uh, on the second string, you have zero, one, three. Okay, so instead of playing this and letting go of the chord, you put this on and then you have fingers free to pick it while the chord still rings. Now this is not a chord per se, but it's a chord outline. It's a third. So it's an octave and a third if you want to get technical, but let's not get technical. It takes all the fun out of it. Um, so the F chord outline and then 0, 1, 3 on the second string. Then you have a C chord again and you play strings 2 and 5, then the third string. And then you play everything again, just without the G string at the end. Right? Up to the C chord, the C octave, actually, because you're not playing the chord. But you can, again, depending on your own preference, you can play the chord, you can play the chord, or just the C octave. Then you play the first line again, including the G string. And then add the E string at the end. Okay, so three different variations on the same line. F, C, G string. F, C without the G string, then F, C with the G string at the end and an additional E note. So three F, C sequences. And um, then you have D minor, and again, you can either pick strings 1 and 4, or the whole chord. And then the open E string, 3 on the 2nd string, you have it in the chord. Then the open E string again, then 3 on the 2nd string again with G. Right? So that's the first ending of the line. Then you play the first couple of FC variations with the G string and without the G string. Then you play the F line again and then you play the A string with one zero on the E string. Then one on the second string, two on the third for an A minor arpeggio. But you start it with one on the E string. Okay? So F, A minor. Then you have B flat, but you don't put the chord on because again you need to play one zero on the E string. So you put two fingers on, one and one on strings one and five. Then you play an open E string. Then, just like the D minor G line, you play three on the second string, open E string, okay, with the B flat bass still ringing, and then the same G chord with three on the second string, and you're done with the verse. So, F, C, the second time, a third time, don't forget the high uh, E string. Then D minor, G. Then the first iterations of uh, F C, the first couple of iterations. With the G string and without the G string. Then F again, A minor, B flat, G. And that's the verse. Now for the chorus. The chorus starts with a C chord. So you put the C chord on with three on the E string, a high G note. So you get this C voicing. So you play the second string on one, okay, a C note. Then you play strings one and five or the chord. So you get this. Or this. Then open E string. Then the G chord with three on the second string. Then three on the E string, then A minor. Now again, you can play strings one and five or the chord. 
then one on the second string, and then two on the third string with the F bass. So you can do this. Just add the thumb on one on the E bass string for this. Okay? Instead of changing the whole chord. So you get this. Okay? Just take the first finger off and add the thumb on the bass instead of having to change the whole chord and having the notes stop okay, abruptly. And that way you keep the notes ringing throughout the melody line. Um, then you have C, just a straight arpeggio, strings five, three, two, one. Okay, and then you have this. Okay, it's a descending bass line. Okay, so you play strings one and four on one and three, okay? One on the E string, three on the D string. Okay, it's an F octave. Then two on the D string. Then open first and fourth strings. Then three and three on strings two and five. Technically, it's a C9, C add nine outline, but again, let's not get technical. Then, um, the G bass note, while this note is still ringing, the D note. So again, one and three on strings one and four, two on the D string, open first and fourth strings, three and three on strings two and five, then the G bass note. Okay? Then uh, you play the F bass again, then you have two on the third string, open second string, then the C octave again, one and three on strings two and five, or the C chord. And then you have two G strings, then it's A minor um, seven. So you can either play A minor with three on the E string, or um, use this, you're on a C chord. So you just let go of the fifth string and add the pinky on the E string. This is also A minor seven with an open G string. Your choice, again. Uh, you make your own arrangements. I'm uh, just showing you the ropes. So after this, you play the open E string and then you put on the F chord and you play strings two and five then, second string, third strings. Okay, like this. It's the same rhythmic approach. It's... Okay, you can still put it on like this. One on the second string, two on the third, and the thumb on the bass. Again, depending on what you want to get out of the chord. If you want the whole chord, okay, then you put the whole chord on. Then you have two different endings. The first ending is this. Again, it's kind of a walking bass line, but this time with most of the chord notes harmonizing it. So you start with D minor, you can play strings one and four or the chord, then uh, C, and again, the melody note is on the E string, so you can play strings one and five or the chord. Then it's D minor again, but the melody note is three on the second string, so you play strings two and four three on the second string and the open fourth string, then the open E string, two on the bass to indicate a D over F sharp chord, okay, this, and an approach note into G, okay, so um, again, the D minor, and then open uh, E string, then two on the bass, then three and three on strings, two and five, uh, two and six, it's G, not C this time, so it's on strings two and six, or the whole chord again. So that's the first ending, D minor, C, D minor again. Well, technically it's D sus two, but again, let's leave technicality out of it. Then two on the bass note, and G. I play the second string first, and then the G bass note to make it kind of a um, uh, polyphonic um, line, but you don't have to. You can play the G chord 
uh, as it is. Okay, we're playing three on the second string and then the sixth string on uh, three. So that's the first ending. The second ending is open E string, then D minor and C again. Then uh, the D uh, octave again, three on the second string, open D string. But then you have the G bass note, and then one one on the second string, and you put on a C sus four chord. You put on the C chord and add the pinky on three on the fourth string, and you play it any way you want. And then let go of the pinky, back to a C chord, and you play the C chord. So again, D minor, C, D octave, G bass note, 1-1 one, one on the second string, a simple C sus4 arpeggio, any way you want to do it. Okay, down and up, just down, just up, any way uh, that fits your own preference. And then C. So that's the chorus. C, G, A minor, F, C, then the descending bass note line. Okay, and you have a G chord so you can fill it in. Okay, if you want, again, by a very simple arpeggio, and then F. C, A minor, A minor 7, then F, and then the first ending. Okay, and again, you can complete the bar by a simple G chord arpeggio. Then the whole chorus again with the second ending. start all over again or just finish there that's a good spot to end so uh, before you go practice this please subscribe to my channel if you haven't already I've got a ton of lessons for free for you to learn so why not subscribe and join the lick and ref community in the description below you'll find a link to the tab also for free but if you want to give something back to lick and ref there's a donation button right above the tab you can't miss it and everything goes right back into lick and ref into making these lessons into your guitar education so thank you very much feel free to share this lesson with anyone you want your family your friends, your dogs, your imaginary friends, your enemies, uh, your grandparents uh, even. So um, enjoy, let me know how it goes, and I'll see you in the next lesson. Bye for now. Thanks for watching.